Can you talk a little bit about why it works? Like, what is the seed actually doing? You're getting a nutrient, but I could take a supplement. I could cycle those nutrients. What What is it about the seed? Yeah, so the cool thing about seed cycling is that it honors that we are cyclical beings, basically, that women have this 28-day cycle. And so we use flaxseed and pumpkin seeds in the first half of the cycle and then sesame and sunflower in the second half. And those are, you know, everybody says that seed cycling is ancient. We actually cannot figure out who invented it. We've had a few people say that they were the one or that some, <laughs> yeah, right. that this, <laughs> this other guy, this it. naturopathic doctor, this guy. So um, shout out to you, whoever you are. You haven't made <laughs> yourself really known, but it's become um, very popular. I think recently because Mindy, as you were saying, people really want to use food as medicine. Yeah. They yes. want a very natural and holistic approach. And especially people who, like Yasmin said, who are on birth control for years, for people who are just kind of putting Band-Aids on the symptoms. They want something that they can take and feel really good about. And that's the cool thing about seed cycling is it's seeds. It's literally food, right? So there's, a, other than somebody having an allergy or an intolerance to the seeds, there's virtually no harm that can be done with having mm, seeds for every sure. day, yeah. right? So, you know, it's not like taking a medication. But we talked about flax, which has the fatty acids, it has the lignans, it has magnesium. Let's talk about pumpkin seeds, which are also used in the first half. So those have things like iron, rich source of magnesium, tryptophan, which we know is a precursor to serotonin, and then melatonin. So we hear so many women who say they are sleeping better than ever mm. when they when they implement seed cycling. And it's kind of a cool circle because we know that we need sleep for progesterone. And so it's kind of like working on the melatonin aspect, but it's also working to support progesterone levels. And then we have sesame and we have sunflower seeds, which contain also, again, these fatty acids and then things like manganese and vitamin E, these antioxidants and flavanols that essentially help with blood sugar imbalances and also with inflammation. And so a, a lot of what we've noticed and a lot of what we've talked to with experts is that women who really struggle with their periods, probably one of the number one things they can do is focus on their blood sugar. So anything that they can implement in their diet that supports healthy blood sugar is going to be a win, which is why I think the seeds work in that sense, also with reducing inflammation, also with bringing in all these nutrients that our hormones need to be produced and to be modulated as well. So it's kind of like hitting your body from all different sides, essentially using so food as medicine. Yeah. So, okay. So then does it matter what type, like, like then I, you know, when I sit at like I go to the farmer's market and I there's one vendor there that has nuts and seeds. I know, OK, it needs to be raw. If mm -hmm. I can get a sprouted almond, that would be better. You know, so is there something we need to know about the quality of the seed or can I just rush off and start putting pumpkin seeds on my salads at, at a certain time of my cycle? Yeah, well, if somebody can get their hands on these in any which way, I mean, that's going to be better than nothing. But quality definitely matters, which is why we wanted to create a product for people, because mm -hmm. so many of the seeds that are sitting at the grocery store have been on that shelf for God knows how long. We know that seeds, when they're exposed to light and they're exposed to heat, they become rancid. So we want to make sure that people are choosing seeds and nuts. So we're making sure that people are choosing highest quality. So for us, we go with organic we try to ground, grind them as frequently as possible so they're freshly ground because you you should take ground seeds when you're seed cycling, not mm. whole seeds. That's when all the oils are released. That's when you get the beneficial oh. compounds. So okay. we yeah we have freshly ground seeds in our product, organic. We get them from a high quality farm that we love and work with. So the quality does matter. And then we also recommend refrigerating your seeds when possible because again, when they're exposed to light and heat, they can become rancid and Nobody wants rancid oils in their body. Yeah, no, yeah. And no. Just to add what Kay was doing, because I was doing seed cycling so incorrectly for a while. But mm. even when you go to, I thought, oh, let me go to the grocery store and buy grounded seeds. I can just create it. But what I learned through the process of us creating our own product, when you buy cold milled seeds, which is what you have in the grocery stores, that strips out all the oils, which Kay had mentioned. That's the magic and the, the mm. nutrient value in the seed. So I just want to share that because I was doing it wrong. And also we do third party testing for all the metals since we know there's been some Thank you. yeah conversation around especially flaxseed so yeah we we do all the checks just to kind of make sure of that as well 
So you're just so I have a visual. Yours comes in a powder. Is that is it like a a powder it's, or the, yeah? I guess you could describe it as a powder. It's not as fine as a powder, but they're imagine like coffee grinds essentially, but they're mm-hmm. seeds. Okay, and I've watched on your Instagram. You guys put them in everything, like. Like, which seems really brilliant. So are there certain foods? Do you just take a scoop of it and eat it? Or are there certain foods that they pair better with? Have you experimented with pairing with other foods like squashes we know will help with progesterone production? Like, have you have you looked at that combination? Yeah, that's a good question. We haven't gotten too much into the food com- combining other than saying that seed cycling is not a miracle cure. So you can't just throw seeds at your life and be doing every other unhealthy habit and expect for changes to happen. So the nice thing is that all of the healthy habits that we recommend, including seed cycling, are going to support all of our hormones, our testosterone, our progesterone, our estrogen. We recommend putting them in anything as long as you're not cooking or baking them. Mm -hmm. We don't want to lose the value there. So I love to blend it in my smoothies. Yasmin sometimes will put it in yogurt or she'll just take Mm. it by the spoonful. It really depends. People put it on their avocado toast. They they definitely are versatile, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. Because it's got to be easy. This has been my my thing that I've discovered with Fast Like a Girl was people got such, women got such incredible results, like Mm. dropped weight, got off medication, the fertility, oh my God, the number of women that got pregnant following the fasting cycle that was in there. And a part of why I've thought actually a lot of like how it worked so well for so many women. And I think what fasting does is it gives you a break from the toxic food. Mm. And if you can put that in the appropriate part of your menstrual cycle, then, okay, now you're recovering from this Western diet. So if I start seed cycling, but I'm eating inflammatory foods, is, is what I'm interpreting you're saying is that it, it it may not be that miracle cure that both of you experienced with this and many of the women that have used your product. Totally. But I'm sure similarly to you, Mindy, the people that are looking out for you are not necessarily partaking in very unhealthy habits. They're already primed for doing what works for them. And I love that you're incorporating that because that's just that's such a mission for us because it's we're actually not taught to think about our menstrual cycle unless we are a have really bad periods or trying to avoid pregnancy or trying to get pregnant. And those first two, it's like, forget about it. You're trying to avoid pregnancy or you have bad periods. Somebody just throws hormonal birth control at you and you're like, okay, check that off. I don't even have to have a period anymore. I don't have to think about this. And then what we often see is women in their 20s and 30s who get off of hormonal birth control after all these years and they're like, I don't understand my body. I don't understand my hormones. I don't even know what's going on with me. Maybe I'm experiencing infertility. I need to get back on track. Hopefully they get pregnant. If not, then they have to go on this whole journey. And Yasmin and I just want to reach the younger group of women specifically because if we could help them avoid all of the downstream consequences of not taking care of your hormones and things like PCOS or infertility or fibroids or cysts or all of the, you know, acne that we had to deal with, then that would be so nice. And they don't have to have like a crazy in-depth understanding of it all, but just basic enough to know that their everyday choices can make such a huge impact on their hormones and avoid all of these like painful things that I had to deal with. Right. Right. 